if you're like me, you are making decisions all the time. I always tell my wife, my brain is only capable of making eight good decisions every day. After that, I'm wasted. So I save myself trouble. I save myself energy to make good decisions. And making decisions to me is, is like this illustration. Imagine every choice you're about to make in your life, every decision you're about to make, every move you're about to make, it's like a big scale. You're facing a big scale in front of you. And on one side of the scale, there's all these important things, you know, kids, marriage, finances, and then you think, oh, this, these are all the important things. But then on the other side, there is health, safety, family, friends, and both sides are important. And then you, you get lost because you look at one side and look at the other side and the scale doesn't seem to move. And that's why I use the expression, keep your eyes on the needle. What does that mean? When you start balancing, when you start weighing in and out different things, what makes the decision easier is what moves the needle. If you take away family aspect of every decision, the needle is going to move in one direction. When you look at that needle being moved on that imaginary scale, you know the direction to go. And if you put family back in and you calculate the weight of family back in and then you take the job out, then you go, oh, it moved the needle in that direction. And you get to decide the direction that the, you want the needle to move. But you got to keep your eye in the needle. Why do I say that? It's very common for us to focus on what doesn't matter. And, and I came up with the sentence and I told him, he thought, it was, he thought it was amazing, I thought it was average, but here's the deal. What is indifferent makes no difference. Do you understand that? What's indifferent makes no difference. I'm sure if you're like myself, you have all of those things that you keep in your garage and you keep in your basement that you think, oh, you know, this has got a sentimental value, but you haven't looked at that thing for 10 years. It doesn't really have any sentimental values. And you know what, like I, I keep, um, man, I keep so many things. I should be preaching this to myself, but I keep a flute. I don't know if you know that, but I grew up playing the flute. I played in an orchestra, so I'm a bit of a musician. Um, not that I consider myself a musician anyway, but I, I have a flute at home. And every now and again, very rarely, I get to play the flute. My daughters watch it. My wife loves it. But, you know, sentimental value, that's a lie. I can get rid of that, you know, because I'm not using it. And if I really want to use it again, I'll just go and buy another one. So if it's indifferent, it makes no difference. So here's a question for you to ponder. Why do we waste our time on things that don't matter? Why? No, I'm not asking you to identify what doesn't matter. I'm asking you, why do you think you waste time on things that don't matter? I'll tell you why. Because we are conditioned that way. We are conditioned for instant gratification. We are conditioned for rewards right on the next step. And then we focus on what doesn't matter. You should be going to the gym two or three times a week, or maybe going for a run or exercising. That's not going to promote or that's not going to generate any result in one week's time. But if you keep doing it for five years or six years, you will be healthier then. But because we don't want to wait, because we're conditioned with the get rich quick schemes of all things in life, we get distracted and we focus on things that don't matter. Now think about this. When you're about to make a decision, whatever decision it is, family, work, whatever the decision is, you have to think about this equation. It's real time impact against long time impact return. Real-time impact against long-time result. When you're about to make a decision, you think, okay, what's, what's the impact that this is going to have now? Because every decision has an impact now. But what is the long-term result that I'm expecting out of this? I'll give you an example. You um, decide to change your diet. You're going to eat healthier. What's the immediate impact now? You're going to miss your carbs. You're going to miss out on sugar. You're gonna have that sensation. You're gonna feel like you want it. It's like you were attached to that drug. Sugar is a drug. There's, there's a bunch of drugs that we consume every day. That's the real time impact. You're gonna feel it. I have, a, I have a friend, his name is Sam Buckley. Good friend. A while ago, he decided to try the carnivore diet. A bunch of guys in our church, they were trying the carnivore diet. He decided to do the same thing. His body wasn't ready and he went all in, straight out. Like he cut everything, boom, right there and then. Three days later, the guy was sick. <laughs> he was sick. He, he looked sick and he felt sick. But his body was getting rid of all, all of the, 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 the things that really don't matter. But he was resilient. 
he was disciplined. And after that, maybe four, five, six days, he was feeling much better. It is the right now real-time impact against the long-term results. If you, especially if you're young, you have to keep your eyes on the long term. Not the short term, but the long term. The short term doesn't do anything for you. The long term. That's the trick. I want to share with you four things that I do. It's my experience. It's not scientific, but it works for me. Four things that I do that help, helps me keep my eyes on my needle. Number one, routine. Routine. We need routine. We like babies. We, when we are raising babies, people, people say, oh, you know, babies need routine. Adults need routine too. If you don't have a routine, you're unorganized. Sorry, this is offensive, I know, but if you don't have a routine, it's unorganized. So you need a routine. Before things get hectic, I organize my routine for optimal results. So I'll tell you what that is. Like the main thing on my routine, the main thing, the main tool that I use is a very technological tool. It's just recent, like most people never used it. It's, it's better than AI. It's called Calendar. If you learn how to use your calendar, man, you're ahead of 90% of people because most people have no idea how to use a calendar, either on a written form or on their phone. Do you know you have a calendar on your phone? Yeah, use the calendar. I organize my calendar for my optimal results, and this is how I organize it. I, when I build my calendar, I make sure that I work on my calendar and for my calendar. This is my optimal result. I work on my calendar and for my calendar. What does that mean? When I'm working on my calendar, I'm planning. I, I know I have 168 hours in a week, 24 hours in a day. I know I sleep an average of six hours every day. I don't sleep much. I don't, I don't sleep, much, sleep much. I know I take about an hour to eat. It's very rare for me to eat in half an hour. I know I take a couple of hours of exercise every day. One of them is jujitsu, and then you got to shower. And then I know there's about an hour and a half to two hours a day that I'm driving. So as you can see, I'm very focused, very organized with my day. In between, there are blocks. I believe in the Steve Jobs philosophy of work. I work for two to three hours, have a break, I work for another two to three hours, and that should be enough because the reality is nobody works productively for eight hours straight in a row every day anyway. That's a lie. That's a, that's a model that you've been sold. It's the industrial age. We've passed that. We're in the information age. So that's, that's gone. But I organize my calendar and I work on my calendar every single month. I can guarantee you every single month I sit down and I shift things around in my calendar. I, I adjust things around in my calendar. I've got six calendars, three businesses running. As you can imagine, there's a lot of things to be shifted. It's family, responsibility is my responsibility as a man, as a Christian, as a leader, as a pastor, as a businessman. There's a lot of stuff. So I work on my calendar, but then I work for my calendar. What does that mean to work for my calendar? It means that I am submitted to my calendar. I'm employed by my calendar. My first boss is the calendar, which means if I have set aside this block of time to do script writing, for example, I will stop and I'll do script writing. If, even if I'm at, at a restaurant, I'll bring out the laptop, I'll sit down and I'll work on my script writing. Why? Because I planned that. Very soon I'm going to talk to you about strategic, tactic and operational areas of your life. But because I planned before, I had an overarching goal to be achieved. And when I'm operating in the middle of the day, I, I don't know that, that's out of focus. But because I trust my planning process, I work on my calendar and for my calendar. You need to work for your calendar because if you don't, I used to believe that I was free to do whatever I wanted. But if I, if, if I have no boss, if I have no accountability to my calendar, at some point, someone's gonna be cheated on. I, I like the phrase, you have to choose who you cheat in your life, there's family, there's your wife, there's kids, there's work, there's colleagues. Someone's going to be cheated on. You have to choose who's going to be cheated on in terms of time because you don't have time for everyone. That's a reality. Unfortunately, we don't. So my physical exercise and my preparation time are two of the things that are priority on my calendar. I really sit down and I spend time with exercise because I think it's healthy to look after my body and my preparation time. I need to put more things as as predominant in my calendar, I need to work on it. But those are the two things that I don't negotiate. They're there every day. A couple of hours for exercise, a couple of hours for preparation every single day, which leads me to the second thing that I do or the second tool that I use to keep my eyes on the needle, which is intentional with time. I have to be intentional with time. Intentionality is better than intensity. 
Intentionality is better than intensity. A lot of people are very intense, but they're not intentional. So I'll give you an example. I can get a, a machine gun and just shoot in all directions and, and shoot around a, a hundred rounds. I might not hit anyone. I might not hit anything. It's not effective. Or I can get a really, really good rifle and shoot one round and hit the target. Because intentionality is better than intensity in most cases. You need intensity every now and again, yes, but intentionality is always better. You have to be intentional with your time. First, you gotta carve out time in your planning part. So when you're planning, this, this is how I work. I work at my calendar in a blank, and then I carve out the time. I dig time, or this is gonna be time for this, this is gonna be time for that. So my calendar is pre-named. So when someone says, okay, can we get a coffee? What I do is I, I don't fill in a blank space in my calendar. What I do is I fit them in on the coffee time. <laughs> So I got time at this point. And the reason why I do this is because if I don't, that coffee is gonna steal time from my family. Or that coffee is gonna steal time from my productivity. So that's right there. And the same thing goes for work, same thing goes for family. Um, you have to put everything in the calendar. I'm wondering if I should share with you something very personal. <laughs> a long time ago, we saw a reporter on TV and she was saying that she had to schedule intimacy time with her husband. And my wife and I, we looked at each other and we're like, this, this sounds off. But we were recently married. We had no kids. Now we got two kids, three businesses, two jobs. <laughs> you have to schedule time for your intimacy. If you don't, you know, it won't happen. You won't have a quality time for your intimacy. Let me be, let me be very, very bluntly honest with you. If you want to turn upside down in bed, <laughs> you need to carve out time because that doesn't happen in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like especially if you're a woman and you're watching this, you, you should type amen in the comments because it does not take 10 minutes. It might take two minutes for the men, but it doesn't take 10 minutes to turn upside down. All right, so you need to carve out time in your calendar. Put it in the calendar, make your calendar your boss. And secondly, you have to be authentic and genuine with your time. You gotta respect your activity. Why am I saying this? In my calendar, there is family time. And we all need to get better in all these areas. But when I put time for family, it's time for family. Last week, for example, we went for a walk. It took us about an hour and a half. We went for a walk, a walk around the block. My family and I, no phones. We were just playing with the kids, went and saw the kangaroos. Imagine if I'm walking with my kids and as they are talking to me, I'm looking up on my phone, answering emails, answering text messages. How do you think they would feel? they would feel cheated on. They would feel like I'm not giving them attention. And like Gary Vee says, attention, attention is the currency attention of our time. It's always been, it's just evident now. So you wanna, feel, you wanna make someone feel really special, give them your attention. And your undivided attention is where it's at. So no phones on the table, none of that. Being an entrepreneur, I used to think that I was free to do whatever I wanted, like I said. But if I don't carve out time and be genuine and authentic with my time, What's gonna happen is I'm gonna work in every single time that I can because we're all addicted to work. If you love what you do, if you have found your purpose, which is uh, self-promotion coming right there. <laughs> but if you, if you love what you do, you're gonna find every single second you can, every single second that is available for you to produce, for you to be productive, for you to work. And who suffers with that? Your family. In ministry, this is what happens. Kids grow up with ministry families and at the time they have to make a decision when, you know, where am I gonna where, where am I gonna go to university or who am I gonna get married to? They tend to go away from their family. Why? Because they see themselves as either a weight or the opposition. It's almost like they can they can go back in time in their memories and they come to the office room or the, the lounge and they say, Dad, 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 can I, can I ask you a question? And you go like, Oh, just a second, huh? And then that second turns into hours, you never answer the question, and they feel like they're being ignored. When they grow up, they don't want to be around you. And then you need to make a decision. Instead of having their support, you have their opposition. And if you're watching this video, and if you have kids, and if you have moved at least once in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to move, Dad. My life is here. No, your life is not here. Your friends might be here. Your job might be here, but your life is not here. Your life is bigger than the things that you have around you and the friends that you have with you. Friends are important. 
The things that you have around you are important, but they don't define your life. And if you invest time properly, if you carve out time, if you, if you make your routine effective for you, and if you respect the authority you give to your calendar, things are going to be different. Now, in talking about calendar and productivity and all of that, I, I'm a big fan of finding your purpose. We have um, created this course that I would love for you to check out. If you go on my website, it's pedroonpurpose.life. Right there, you can find a link to my course. You can find the link to subscribe to our newsletters or the things that we send. And you can find the book there. And if you do that, I can guarantee you there's going to be a gift for you there that's going to add value to your life. So before we move ahead, I would love to encourage you not only to subscribe to the channel and just like the video or do all the things that we do, but just keep that in mind. Keep the website in your mind and go check it out. It's going to be good for you. All right, let's go back to the video. All right, so number one, routine. Number two, intentionality with time. And number three, you have to learn this concept, the will of life. The will of life is a weapon. The will of life is a tool used by all these famous coaches. They sit down with you, they charge you $5,000 an hour, and they, they ask you questions. They basically are just tips for them to fill out this little wheel of life that, compare, like that helps you analyze your life in different areas, your love area, your success or legacy area, and your work-life balance and all of these things. It's about nine areas. And you need to learn that because this is how you evaluate your balance in life. I'm not a big fan of the word balance, but this is how you evaluate it. I made a video a long time ago, and you have to forgive me. It's an old video. Um, when we started making videos here in Australia, I was sitting in this uh, black studio. It, it's quite fun, actually. Very amateur, but quite fun. But you know what I'm happy about? My context or my content has changed. The content is really good. Like people think I'm arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I'm just good. <laughs> it's, it's just what it is. It's a fact. It's some good ideas, you know, like, and it's not all me. Like I, you have to understand, I'm not boasting. I'm not that genius. I just read a lot and I just put it all in the video. So if you go back th on this little card right here, you can find the video all about the wheel of life. But all I'm going to say is this. If you imagine a wheel in the car, if you bump the wheel and on a curb or something very hard and then it, it dents, the wheel, when you drive, your car is gonna be bumpy. You're gonna go like, Pff, and, you're, Ooh. and then you're gonna feel that bump when you're driving. It's the same with your life. Because if you're driving your life and there's too much work, the wheel is dent, and then it's dented. And what happens is your kids are gonna go, dad, dad. And then the reason why I keep referring to my kids is because it happens to me all the time. And my, kid, my kids need to know that I love them. And maybe this video is gonna serve them in five years time and they're gonna look at the video, but you know, you get the message. If the wheel is dented, the trip is not going to be good. So that's the idea. I, I, I want you to understand. Have a routine. You need a routine like a baby. We're all babies. You need a routine. Number two, be genuine and authentic with your time. Intentional with your time. And number three, learn the wheel of life. You can learn on the video I suggested. The link is going to be in the description below. And I really, I really hope you get your hands on it. You, you, don't, you don't have to say anything. Just watch the video and put it to practice. This is it for today. Like I said, I would love for you to check the website. And if you uh, read the description, there's a bunch of links right here. I'm gonna continue this video on our Patreon, which is a exclusive community that we have. And when we do that, man, there's gonna be some extra tips there about strategy, life strategy. This, I'm really excited about that. If you wanna check it out, it's gonna be on Patreon. You're gonna have to go on that and see for yourself. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave your comment, and I'll see you next Friday. So it's a good day.